So when I plan a, uh, a design like this, like the, the Simon Mac one, I'll first kind of break up the chalkboard. Down there we've got some Easter eggs to love her, left over. Uh, my daughter would not allow me to erase those. So anyways, we'll work here. Um, I have a few tools that I'll use to lay out the chalkboard. Um, I have a, this is a drywall square, so I can use that, line it up with the top of the chalkboard or with the bottom of the chalkboard and get measurements from there. I'll also use a level, check to see it's level. I do know that this chalkboard is level because I installed it and I'm sure it was when I did. So, and I use a ruler. This is an 18 inch ruler, should be inches and centimeters. So, since the chalkboard is level, I can work off the edge of that and kind of estimate where I want the height. And I want to be maybe about 34. So, I'm going to go there. I'm going to make myself another reference mark. on my width, I'll either go with inches or centimeters de depending on uh, the design. So I need three letters here, you know, what's about in the range that I want and divisible by three, so I've got 15 inches, so I'll just make it 15. Here, here, and then kind of split it up from there. I know that the M is a little bit bigger than Instead of going five and five, I'm going to make the M five and a half and take off a quarter on each of the others. So that puts me at ten and a quarter there. So then I want the height, I measure that. This comes out to be about two and then two and a half, which is two to two point five as a ratio of four to five. Whatever that is, I'll divide by four and then multiply by five. Um, five and a half is a nice divide by four, so I'll go with centimeters. That gives me 14. Divided by four is three and a half, so I'll take three and a half times five. That gives me 17 and a half, and that gives me my height. 17 and a half here, 17 and a half on this side. That's kind of how I start, and then break it down. I'll measure to see just approximations to make sure I'm getting this the same width. And the, I don't usually do this much measuring, but when it's uh, block lettering like this, and that's the predominant feature in, in the design, then I'm gonna do a lot of measuring. So I'll keep measuring until I've got all my markings. Um, I'll stick with centimeters a little easier to divide. These are just reference lines. I'll be wiping most of these away. I usually kind of find halfway marks. Now, since I have this, since the next part is script, okay, this is actually my handwriting, I'm just going to estimate. I know that the I comes to about here, and then the M starts there. So, I'm down to approximately there. Like that. I 
And once I have that, I'm going to fill in, do the corrections, um, erase some of this to give it an edge, and then I'll put the beveled edge just around it. Once I have it colored in, I like to add a drop shadow, and with some practice, a drop shadow is really easy. I recommend always stay on the same side, do it the same way every time, because then it's just automatic, and I usually make my drop shadow on the left side, so it'll usually be on this side. However, for this logo, and I designed it a few years ago, I don't know why, it probably just looked better that way when I designed it. I made the drop shadow on the right, so I have to think a little more when I'm doing it on the right. Um, I'll add it in just like this. Now with the, with the C, any curved letter, it's a little more challenging. So you've got to move in a little bit and then come out at a curve. up, you move closer to the line when you're doing it. And there. There. Just a quick scribble, but there you go. And that's it. Simon Mac.